Hi guys, Zane here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of The God Delusion by Richard Dawkins. So, a bit of context as to uh, why I read this. This was actually for the re read a 2018, and I was supposed to read it in November, and I did start it then, and I've only just finished reading it now. So, it took me about four months to get through the audiobook, uh, because I listen to audiobooks for rereads, and obviously this was a reread. And part of the reason for that was that it glitched a few times on my app, so... Basically, I think it was because my phone was running out of battery. It kept taking me back to, say, 45 minutes earlier than where I'd got up to. And I could never remember exactly where I'd got to. So I kind of stopped listening for a little bit. Uh, I also was theoretically was going to listen to it while doing my walks. And then it got cold and I stopped doing my walks. However, I am glad that I reread it. I first read this in about 2014, according to my Goodreads. And fun fact, I posted uh, a, a, I posted on Twitter about my review, and Richard Dawkins retweeted it to about 700,000 people, and it was the highest amount of traffic in one day my blog ever got, so there we go. This bit in the front here that says, The God Delusion has become an iconic international bestseller for our time. Richard Dawkins was first catapulted to fame with The Selfish Gene, which was followed with a string of bestseller books, The Extended Phenotype, The Blind Watchmaker, River Out of Eden, Climbing Mount Improbable, Unweaving the Rainbow, The Ancestor's Tale, and a collection of his shorter writings, A Devil's Chaplain. His latest book, The Greatest Show on Earth, is now available in Black Swan paperback. And I've read a few of those. Um, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. I'd have to check which ones I've read. I do think it was, uh, I think it was in The Selfish Gene where he coined the term uh, meme and memetics. And that's where internet memes get their name from. So basically the idea of a meme is anything that gets passed from person to person. A bit like the thought equivalent uh, of a gene uh, is, is, is kind of the idea behind that. So I'm going to check out my notes because I took some notes on the Audible app as I was walking around. So these might not make, make much sense, but we're going to do our best. And again, these, these are mostly just highlights from throughout the book, sort of different points that I really enjoyed. I guess I should give you an overview of what it is. It's basically non-fiction of Dawkins arguing against the existence of God. He covers a lot of the arguments for God and then kind of tries to debunk them. And then there's also kind of re re reasons as to why we need religion and he tries to debunk those as well. There was some really interesting stuff in it actually. So let's have a look. Let's see. Just one. The God Delusion by Richard Dawkins. Oh yeah, I should point out it was also read by Richard Dawkins and I believe by his wife as well. So the first thing, and I can actually get this in the book as well, and I took a little bit of footage of it. It's dedicated to Douglas Adams, 1952 to 2001. And the quote uh, from Adams is, Isn't it enough to see that a garden is beautiful without having to believe that there are fairies at the bottom of it too? And uh, yeah, so Dawkins and Adams were both friends. I think they both went to Oxford together, which is interesting because I finished l listening to it while in Oxford. All right, let me, let's see. We have a quote here where he said, Organising atheists is like herding cats because they're so single-minded. But even if they can't be herded, cats can make a lot of noise. I, I suppose it's interesting because there isn't really a central governing body for atheists as opposed to with religion. You you know, you have, the, say, the Catholic Church. Another quote, Why do we create abnormally thick walls of respect for religion? It should be debated in the same way that we debate other divisive subjects like politics, which I agree with. It says here, We avoid even using the names, such as when ethnic cleansing is actually just religious cleansing. So, for example, in Northern Ireland, instead of saying Catholics versus Protestants, we would say nationalists versus loyalists. And it's kind of putting this euphemistic name over it, to, I guess, to hide the fact that it's religion based. There was a church in America that was allowed to take ayahuasca for religious ceremonies with no evidence that it was needed. Whereas cancer sufferers can't smoke a joint without risking prosecution, despite the fact that that has scientific backing. And so it's a kind of an illustration of how religion and science are treated differently and in many ways unfairly. Of speech in America, it doesn't cover hate speech. But if you can claim it's religious, it doesn't count as hate speech. So you can't say, I hate gay people, as free speech. But you can say, I hate gay people, as a religious belief. Great quote here, uh, Dawkins said, We should respect other people's religions, but only to the extent that we respect their opinion that their wife is beautiful and their children are intelligent. Which I think is a great quote. And a line I really liked, he said, Marvel at the richness of human gullibility. Okay, so I noted down here there was a study testing 1,800 coronary heart disease patients split into three groups. And then one group received pr no prayers and didn't know it. One received prayers and did know it. And one received prayers and didn't know it. And there was no difference between the first two groups. And then the third one did worse. So basically when people knew that they were receiving prayers, it actually made them worse. And the theory is that it's because patients thought, well, I must be sick if I need prayers. 
there's some thoughtful stuff here. So how would we advertise a human presence in the galaxy if we were to try and reach out to aliens? So rhythmic signals wouldn't work because there's a lot of natural rhythm in the universe. So things like pulsars, which send out rhythmic bursts of electromagnetism, all at different speeds depending on that particular pulsar as well. So scientists think that the best way to do it might be to signal using prime numbers because it's a pattern, so it's not random, but it's also a pattern that's really unlikely to occur in nature. Got a note here, if God is omniscient, then he already knows what he's going to do, which means he can't change it, which means he's not omnipotent. So the two are mutually exclusive. We had a reference to every sperm is sacred, the Monty Python song. There was a quote as well by Umberto Eco where he said, every village has a torch, a teacher, and an extinguisher, a priest. Kind of scary quote, the Catholic Church has paid out over a billion dollars to sexual abuse victims. And uh, Alfred Hitchcock, he once saw a priest in conversation with a young boy and the priest had uh, his hand on his shoulder and he was driving past in his car and he leaned out, he said it was the scariest thing he'd ever seen and he, he leaned out of the window and shouted, I've got this direct quote, run little boy, run for your life. And then uh, another thing from my phone as well, that uh, believing that the earth is 6,000 years old is equivalent to believing the distance between New York and San Francisco is 700 yards. There was a quote from uh, Kathy Ladman. She said, all religions are the same. Religion is basically guilt with different holidays. Dawkins called religions viruses of the mind, which was interesting because again, he uh, he coined the term meme. And this actually led into him talking about memes and his thoughts on memes. Uh, because again, he, he coined that term in the selfish gene. There were some references to Arthur C. Clarke's third law as well, which is that any sufficiently advanced technology is uh, indistinguishable from magic, which I thought was quite cool. And then also I thought it was quite interesting. He pointed out that it's, it's usually religious groups that are against euthanasia, but religious people think that there's something after death, whereas atheists don't. So how come it's atheists that are usually in favour of euthanasia? Shouldn't it be a good thing for someone who's suffering to be, you know, moved on to the, the heavenly afterlife? I, I found it interesting enough. Again, if you're interested in religion in any way, even if you're quite religious, it's potentially worth reading just to sort of see some of the arguments from the other side. I think it, especially for me, the first time I read it, it certainly got my blood boiling a lot. And it does highlight a lot of the more negative aspects of religion that anybody would agree is a negative side things like uh, religious extremism and there also some stuff he talked about as well at the idea of um, referring to children by their religion so saying a four-year-old Sikh for example is just weird because kids aren't old enough to have made their own decisions at that point uh, yeah I don't know it's just it's just interesting and I think if you're interested in religion in any in any way it's a, it's a decent one to read but you're you're obviously going to take more out of it if you kind of side with Dawkins beliefs as well which I do and uh, my initial read of this I gave it five out of five back in you know five years ago or whatever uh, this this reread I gave it a four out of five and I did enjoy the audiobook as well I'd, I'd recommend checking that out but yeah there we have it that's what I thought of it don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book if you read it and uh, keep it civil please uh, they, <laughs> I also I received death threats when he re when he retweeted my uh, book blogs review of this from like random people who follow Richard Dawkins on Twitter. So, you know, feel free to disagree. It, it's it's, uh, it's one of the things about being human, you know, we can debate these things. So if anyone fancies a debate, let's, let's keep it civil in the comments. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video, hit subscribe for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot, bye bye.